All right, Megan Small, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. We did uh, try this a second ago. We had some technical issues, so we're, we're going back at it. So Take two. <laughs> Take two. No, so how's things? Where are you at right now? I am at home in Maryland enjoying some family time. Yeah, crazy time for everybody right now. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world and a lot of things to consider and health is the number one priority for everybody right now but obviously you as a senior at Tennessee and an Olympic level aspiring athlete um, there's also a lot going on in your life that has been flipped upside down the last few days as well so talk to us about some of the things that have just happened within the last week uh, well in the last week um First thing that happened was NCAA's was canceled, um, which we we knew was a very high possibility, and I had kind of started grasping the fact that it was probably going to be canceled after seeing all of the major sports worldwide kind of shutting down, stepping back, postponing their seasons. Um, so I had kind of started coming to terms with the fact that that was most likely going to be canceled, um, if not at least postponed. Um, so I guess that was <laughs> the major, major thing. Uh, then our Tennessee Athletics shut down, so we were kind of told to get off of campus and good <laughs> luck finding somewhere to train. <laughs> um, and we did. Matt went above and beyond to find somewhere in Knoxville for the pro group to train which I am now part of, I guess. <laughs> um, so he found some little pool that was willing to have us and we're just kind of hoping that they stay open for as long as they can. Um, otherwise, I am back home training because as of right now, I still have a pool here. And I have been jumping from home gym to home gym trying to get a workout in. So it's been it's been hectic, but we're taking it day by day and just making what we can out of every situation. And do you know anyone personally with the virus? Not yet. Um, my grandparents are essentially self-quarantining even though they don't really have any symptoms. Um, my grandfather just got back from Aruba. Um, he seems to be fine, no symptoms whatsoever, but he was down there when all of this started happening and he was like, well, I'm gonna enjoy my vacation. So. He stayed down there and pushed it as far as he could push it and then came home and he hasn't been showing any signs. He got screened and everything. So he's yeah. been good. So, so yeah. far, no, but I do have friends who have a couple of grandparents who have started to show symptoms and they're being taken care of. So, wow, well, yeah. Yeah. It's a scary time for everybody, but I think we're all kind of trying to do the best we can and self quarantine and, um, and socially what do they call that socially social yeah social distancing. social distancing yeah that's a new buzzword um but yeah so it's it's definitely crazy so what are some of the emotions that you went through obviously having one of the best seasons of your life as a, as a swimmer a senior at tennessee winning the sec championship as a team for the first time and then this happens i mean obviously there's a range of emotions what were they for you um we were all very, very excited for what was about to happen at NCAAs. I mean, we had our eyes set on the title. Um, so I think to have that opportunity kind of ripped away from us, it was heartbreaking. But there are some teams who didn't even get to start their season. Um, and I think we were looking at it from that perspective. And during our meeting, our, our coach Ashley – said something along the lines of, this is not a direct quote, but basically put it into perspective that, you know, there are more important things going on right now than swimming. We have a weight coach whose wife is pregnant and he's, she was due any day. Mm. And she was like, you know, Johnny, Johnny's about to bring a baby into this world right now, into this chaotic mess. And, you know, they, they might, she might not be able to get the prenatal care that she needs because of everything that's going on. She was like, so yes, it, it is devastating that this is happening. She was like, but your friends, your families, your loved ones' health is it's more important. So I, I think the way that our coaching staff handled it, it was graceful. It was, you know, understanding, but it was also 
it was, they were blunt and they, they put it into perspective that, you know, this will not be the end of the world for us. Miss a meet will not be the end of the world for us, but losing a loved one would stop your world for a little bit. So, and I, and that, that helped me a lot because I'm very family oriented. And so to hear that and to like actually have it put into perspective that I could lose a loved one and I'm going to get upset over a swim meet, like, no, that not in my world. That's not happening in my world. So, um, I'm okay. I'm fine. I know others are struggling, but I think as time goes on and the severity of this virus grows, um, it's going to put into perspective for a lot of people that the cancellation of these meets was necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, NCAAs for women would have started today. Do you feel like right now sitting here, you're in the best shape of your life? You're in the, you're, you would have performed the best you, you've ever performed? Yeah. I mean, right now, after not swimming for a day, probably not. But leading into it, yeah, I mean, I was going to do events I haven't gotten to do, do in a while. Like 400 I am, I haven't gotten to race that in a couple of months. And I've been, I've been having practices that better than any practices I've had in the 4 I am in a really long time. And so, I mean, I was, I was very excited to race 400 I am. And then, I mean, throwing the 200 breaststroke in there and it's just a complete lineup change. So... I, I was just excited to get to race things that I haven't gotten to race. It's kind of like that element of the unknown. It's just, it's exciting. Yeah. So, I mean, I was excited to see what I could do, but there will be other opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. And, and in terms of those other opportunities, do you think you guys are going to get a chance to have a fifth year? I know that's being talked about. Is that a possibility you think? Uh, I don't think it will be for swimming um, and probably not basketball i don't know if they've released that one yet but i mean i know spring sports that were canceled the ncaa has granted them a fifth year i believe don't quote me on that i think i've seen things going on about that um yeah. but that was for like true uh, spring sports yeah um, i think if they were to offer something for swimming specifically it could be something along the lines of like maybe NCAA's next year, the people who didn't get to swim who are still swimming are given that opportunity, not told like, okay, you have to do it, but they're given at least the opportunity to maybe compete. But I don't think it should be a, I don't think it should be a whole year. Like we already got to have our whole year, you know, like we did what we could leading up to NCAA's truly NCAA's is the only thing that was taken from swimmers. Yeah. Um, or maybe, maybe even like a, a meet put together for like later down the road for the kids that made NCAAs that we could com- like compete in. I, I don't know. I think like there's a, a lot of meet. going on. Yeah, like a senior meet for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that would be like a cool thought. Like, I think that'd be like, we were joking before SECs. We we're like, how cool would it be if a group of seniors like from every team got together we did like a mixed medley relay or something like just for fun mm, like because yeah. i'm very good friends with a lot of seniors in the sec so like you're just like joking about it and you're like yeah like, that's probably not gonna happen but yeah. it, I, I think it would be fun like a, a great send-off for a lot of the kids that did lose this meet but that would mean they'd have to keep training so i don't i know a lot of people are ready to now just move on um so i don't know if how that would play out um yeah. but I don't know. I think it would be I think it'd be really cool. It'd be a it'd be fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean you did accomplish a lot. It was the first time in, in history of Tennessee, right, that you you ladies had won the SEC championship. That's a big deal. How'd you yeah. feel about that? Um I we were excited, but without sounding cocky because I'm not a cocky person, um I think we we had thought about it, planned for it, trained for it, believed in it so much that actually winning it didn't come as as big as as big of a surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, like when you envision things, we do a lot of mental training. When you when you envision things, you you write it down, you say it out loud. You you truly have this deep deep belief in what you can do as a whole. Um, the outcome isn't as surprising and you know how to handle yourself when you are in the lead points wise and 
when you're under the pressure of, okay, we need these points. You, you know how to handle yourself because you know what you're doing it for and you've been preparing for it. So I think while there was a lot of surprise, like surprise and emotions were high, we knew how to handle ourselves in those moments because all the preparation that became months and months before. Yeah. Now it did come down. I mean, it's a five day meet. It came down to the last day. How, how were emotions on the last day? Um, we were fine. The, the swimmers, we were just having a good old time <laughs> being our annoying selves. But you could, you could tell the coaches were a little on edge. <laughs> I watched Ashley John drink four cups of coffee within the first 40 minutes of the meet when we got there. So um, they were definitely on edge. I think I was freaking out a little bit because I didn't have the swim that I felt I needed to have in order to, you know, help us points-wise. But Matt reassured me. He's like, nope, it's fine. We're good. So, I mean, I got over it pretty quickly. And then we had several people step up and just do phenomenal things. Alexis Yeager in the A final of the 200 breaststroke stepped up. She's a junior. Swim amazing in the 200 breaststroke and mm. touched out people that, like, we needed her to touch out. And she had said she was going to do it before she even got up on the blocks. Mm. So, it was just we, we had this confidence that we were going to do it. And so, people were doing whatever needed to be done to make it happen like yeah. it was it was very very exciting what's it like finally putting your hands on the trophy for the first time <laughs> it's heavy <laughs> <laughs> he like they handed it to us and we're like holy crap we need a couple of us to hold this like, <laughs> it was really heavy and they just kept having us stand there for pictures and we we're like oh my gosh my hands are numb <laughs> but you know, in reality it was I don't even know how to put it in perspective. It was almost unreal. Like, you know, we've, like I said, we envisioned all of this, but to actually get to hold it, you know, and, um, <laughs> and experience like having our own trophy. Like we talked about like, Oh, what are we going to do with this? When we get this trophy, like leading up to SECs, are we going to get a trophy case? Is it going to sit in our team room? But then to actually have it and mm. hold it, it was, it was funny. It was like a little, a little newborn. It was getting passed around the team. <laughs> Yeah. It was it was very exciting. That's awesome. I love just the way that you're expressing yourself over it. I mean, you can just tell that there's a lot of pride and, and passion in that championship yeah. for you guys. So, you I mean you did mention a second ago that you felt like you even had a chance to win NCAA's. Was that something that the team had talked about? I know it's easy to talk about winning an SEC championship uh, in, in some respects, but NCAA's is another level as well. So, how how was that talk happening? Um, we did, we did talk about it, um, and we did believe that we could do it, and I think that's why some of us were so upset that we did have that opportunity kind of ripped away, um, but it definitely was something that we had our eyes on. I think the highest Tennessee had ever placed was third? Yeah, third, I think. Mm. I think it was third, so, um, you're, you're distracting me. I think it was third. So, um, we, um, um, and Matt actually showed us the picture of the Lady Ball team that went to NCAA's uh, that year. And we're looking at this picture, and he's like, what is one thing you see in common with all of these girls? And they were just like all over each other, hugging each other, kissing each other on the cheek. Like, and it was, we decided, like, the one thing we, they all saw in common was, was love. Like, they loved each other. They loved, like, swimming for Tennessee, or for rep, like, representing Tennessee. And so we were like, you know what? We're going to do this, and we're going to do this through love. Um, and that's what we got to plan on. And so that's what we did at SECs. And honestly, the plan was just to do it again at NCAAs. Um, mm. There's a lot of talk, you know, you see Swim Swam articles giving their power rankings and what they think's about to happen, you know, like they always kind of had us as the underdog and mm. we were ready to go in and kind of show them that you can't count us out because the second you do, you're in trouble. So it's sad that it got taken away, but we were definitely ready to go in there and uh, mix up the pot a little bit. <laughs> yeah. How many women did you have qualify? I want to say Oh, 14, 
14 maybe and then two and di- di- diver two, di- two divers mm, okay we had one qualify on the last day mm. and honestly you know my heart went out to the divers because they got back and the day after it was canceled like oh, wow. they they went out and both of the divers who qualified have injuries that have kept them from training the dives that they have they needed to be training for this meet and they both on their days that they were doing their i guess best board Mm -hmm. um they looked at dave and they said i'm doing these dives like i'll heal later i'm doing these dives wow and they both got up and qualified and one of the divers grace she had her years her ncaa stripped from her her freshman year so for her to get up and qualify again and it be ripped away from her it's just you know my heart went out to both of them because they both struggled all year long and then they knew we needed them and they they stepped up they they really stepped up so yeah and that, that's the other thing was last year at ncaa's we didn't have a diver mm. not one so we were we were so excited to walk out and be like oh, we have two divers like this is this is a real deal now but they'll have their chance they will both they will both have their chance neither of them were seniors seniors they'll be able to hop up next year yeah now if um if it did come to a situation where you were given another chance in in any respect do you think you'd take it or are you ready to go professional i think if it wouldn't impact my professional career i would if it if i was allowed to do both i would do it and they wouldn't impact each other i would do it but if Um, you had to make a choice i think i'd be ready to move on yeah. Um, I do think the opportunity would be amazing for those who aren't being given the opportunity to go professional. Yeah. Um, I think that would be an amazing opportunity for them to just be able to you know, close the book on their own terms. Um, but I think I would be ready to move on. I'm, mm. I'm excited for that next chapter. <laughs> so swimming professional is something definitely that you want to want to do. Yes. Um, it's actually a decision I made in the last two months um it was in my mind i was i was done after ncaa's i was going to law school i was moving on um and then the total earnings started coming out from the <laughs> past i was tell and i'm looking at it and i'm like wow that's three years of law school paid for so yeah i'm now going pro <laughs> yeah you have these talents now you might as well use them while you got them right i mean you might as well and that's what my mom's been saying is you know what she's like you're only gonna have so long to make make what you can out of swimming she's like you might as well she's like do it for a season see what happens and then yeah. you can move on and she's like in best case scenario you pay for law school in the meantime i was like you know i can't argue with that so yeah. she idea. was honestly she's the reason i in the end decided to do ISL. Uh, she's the one that pushed me there, and I thought she was going to be the biggest person to push me away from it, just because I have like been planning on law school for so long. It was, I thought she was going to be the one that's like, no, you had a plan, you're sticking to the plan. Mm. And I came home at Christmas, and she was like, why aren't you doing ISL? And it just kind of took me by surprise. So here we yeah. are. <laughs> oh well, nice. Sounds like I need to have a chat with your mom then. Um, <laughs> so listen, you know what? What's the event you feel like you can make the Olympic team in? Two hundred IM. Yeah. I I think I have my best shot in that. Uh, um, I'm gonna swim more. I'm gonna swim more events. I'm not 100 percent sure yet. Definitely two free. Um, and obviously, there's more chances to make the team in the 200 free so that's another thing we're shooting for um so two free i might you know show up and do a 400 im and see what happens i mean that's very competitive right now but might as well do it um probably 200 back and maybe two fly um that's a big schedule i mean i swam i think six or seven events my senior year in high school when i went so (laughs) we're just gonna we're gonna make the best of it and we're gonna do what we can i I might narrow it down a bit but yeah we'll see definitely 200 i am though that's the one i'm most excited about is that the first would that be the first event i believe so yeah yeah i think that's up pretty early in the program it might actually be the last four days oh really Okay. I think well, I think it might be. I'm not 100 percent sure. I honestly I don't freak out about the schedule until Matt tells me yeah. I need to. 
you know, look at it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, sitting here today, what's your gut feeling? Is the Olympic trials going to go ahead as scheduled right now? I think we should all keep training and preparing, you know, maybe work on some mental training while you're at home, step inside, keep training like it's going to happen, but also be prepared for it not to. Um, I think I'm a firm believer in having a plan and that's something that we, I mean, at Tennessee, it's something that we, we work on every single day with our mental coaches. What is your plan? You have one step, two step, three step. Like what, what are your steps? Mm. So I think it's, I think it's important to have those steps because, you know, the Olympic trials, like that's people have been sitting around for four years, training their butts off, waiting for this meet to happen. I mean, for the Olympics as well, like people in college two, three years ago and they, they were like, you know what? I'm staying around. I'm going to give this my best shot. And they've been doing that. So I think to have that opportunity, you know, rip from them, you have to have, you know, you have to grieve it a little bit and you need to have those steps for, you know, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and then I'm going to, I'm going to have to move on. Mm. Um, so I think, I think having those steps prepared and knowing how you're going to deal with it either way, it's, it's very important because then that takes some pressure off of like, the unknown like you don't know like how to handle things it takes away from the unknown so i think those steps are important but i think right now everyone should just keep training as much as they can in their basements because <laughs> that's about <laughs> all we've got right now <laughs> what are some tips you could give some kids that are listening to this maybe like some things that you do at home that that uh, help you prepare um, I, I just mentioned this, but we, we do a lot of mental training and, you know, I started doing mental training when I was a high schooler. I mean, it was something that Michael Brooks, like for, he firmly believed in, you know, if you can envision it, getting up and doing it is, is that much easier because you've seen yourself do it so many times. Mm. I mean, I even go as far to, to have a stopwatch and I'll have it in my hand as I have my eyes closed and I'm sitting there. I'm like, all right, I hit the wall. I, get my I try and get my splits and I've I've gotten my goal times and my my in my head what I'm doing in my head to match down to point one seconds oh, wow. so it's Man. like I mean you get pretty good at it but it's mm. you, you gotta you have to analyze your race video you have to mm. know how many strokes you take how many underwaters you take what your tempo is and be able to envision that and put it together in your head but then the other side of it is being able to just calm yourself um, I think it's very important with what's going on right now. You know, everyone's outside panic buying toilet paper. You need to be able to just distance yourself from that and, and ground yourself and realize, okay, I am here. I am dealing with this and maybe list three or four things that are like positive that are going on in your world right now that you can hold on to because there's just so much negative talk on the news on social media i deleted i deleted twitter because i can't stand looking at it anymore mm. it's just it's so negative and i think right now like the younger kids especially like they're having their championship meets their high school meets ripped away from them just just find those positives that you can be grateful for and i think gratitude is one of the strongest things in this world and just just find those things that you can be grateful for in a world where you know, there's not a whole lot to be grateful for once you step outside right now. So I think I, that would be the biggest piece of advice I have for younger heads right now. Yeah, well, it's good advice. Awesome advice. Now, you talked about rankings earlier in Swim Swim a little bit. And, you know, I know that coming out of high school, you were, I think, ranked the number one high school female you know, in the country. What was that pressure like? Um. Okay, from being 100% honest, I did not know hardly anything about swimming before my junior year of high school. Um, I didn't know what swim swim was until my mom found it. Uh, yeah, that's a kind good of, thing. Yeah, I, I yeah, uh, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, so I didn't even know that I was ranked the top recruit until my mom pointed it out. Um, I didn't know who the best swim schools were until Michael started kind of throwing them down my throat. And I didn't really care. Um, I didn't care where I was ranked. I didn't care who, what colleges, where. I just wanted to go somewhere that I felt at home. Um, 
so it really wasn't any pressure. I hate to say it, but it really didn't add any extra pressure to me because very strong headed and I'm going to make a decision for me, not based on, you know, what some swims or whoever is telling me I should make. So mm. I, I knew I was going to make that decision for me. So it didn't really matter what outside people were saying essentially. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know we've talked off camera earlier too about Matt credit and, and the relationship you've had with him. And so like, uh, talk to us about that and the decision to end up at Tennessee and, and be coached by Matt. Um, so I, I said this earlier, but um, I'll say it again and a hundred times over. Uh, I, I essentially knew I had, I had a feeling I was going to end up at Tennessee before I even visited. Uh, I met Matt at my Pan Amer the Pan American games. I believe it was my junior year, my junior summer. Um, it would have been in 2015. So yeah, junior summer. Um, and he just, he opened his arms to me there. And Michael, my head coach at the time was, he was on that meet with us as well. And he kind of took a step back because he loved Matt and he wanted to get, let me interact with him and, you know, like get out of my comfort zone of always going to him post race and pre race. So mm. he let, he let Matt kind of take over. And so I was able to build a little bit of a relationship with him there. Mm. So then the recruiting process rolled around, you know, like I'm looking at schools, schools and I was just so excited to go to Tennessee and you know, they didn't do anything crazy. Like we went swimming in a quarry. Um, we had a, they, they asked me what my favorite fast food restaurant was and they made an at home Chipotle cause that was my favorite fast food at the time. Yeah. Um, and we had like an at home Chipotle thing and played guitar hero. And it was just, I just felt so at peace and so at home and so like loved and accepted when I, while I was there. And, you know, I'm sure people feel that at other schools, like we all have our place, but I just immediately felt it there. And, you know, Matt came out to visit and my parents were divorced. And I told him, I was like, look, like these meetings are going to go a lot better if you have the av availability to, to meet them both separate, not saying they don't get along, but yeah. There will be a lot less distraction if you can meet them separately. And he made the time to do that. Mm. Um, and that was just, that was really, really important to me. And he was so welcoming to my family and just ask, he, when he'd call me for recruiting, he didn't even ask questions about swimming. How was your day? How are your sisters doing? Mm. And so it was like, and I've said it before already that like I'm very family oriented. And so to see him, you know, caring for not just me as a swimmer, but me as a human being and me outside of the pool and my family considering how important they are to me that just that made all the difference and then you know you get to Tennessee and you get to swim with him for four years and at this point I think he's it's harder on me than my mom and dad are but in a good way <laughs> um I know he'll he'll keep me in my place and he'll tell me when I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing and I will forever have an immense amount of love and gratitude for everything that he has given me over the last four years. It's, you can't thank him enough. He does it for everyone, you know? Yeah. That's awesome to have that relationship like that. And it sounds like you're, um, you know, going to stay on at Tennessee too and, and train there as a professional. Would that be right? That would be correct. Nice. Nice. <laughs> well, was, I mean, the future does look good, even though we're sitting here at home and we can't do anything right now. Um, yeah, right inside <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of possibilities out there for sure but um now do you do you see yourself as an olympian do you think do you do you picture that as well i mean you have to if you want it to happen yeah uh, all about that that the visualizing i mean you can you can work hard for it but if you can't look yourself in the mirror and say i'm going to make an olympic team are you um and i mean that's something i had to struggle i struggled with was you know, realizing that, you know, I, I could, I, I could do that. And we worked, we worked with a lady, Rachel Vickery, she's from Australia. And she's like, you're not going to make an Olympic team until you can look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you are going to. Just yeah. because until you can say that you have just so much self doubt and mm -hmm. you're going to be able to walk your way out of it and talk yourself out of it. And she's like, until you can look yourself in the mirror and my thing was without crying, because I cried every time I tried to say it. <laughs> um, she's like, until you can look yourself in the mirror without crying and say you're going to make an Olympic team, 
you're not going to make one. And I love Rachel. She's blunt and I'm blunt and I needed to hear that. And it took me a month or two, but you know what? I can look myself in the mirror and say, I'm going to make an Olympic team now yeah. without no tears. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> um, progress. So it's, it's been a process for me. Cause I mean, I went into Olympic trials in 2016 with um, a lot of confidence and I had circumstances things happen outside of the pool that took away from what should have been my main focus and mm. I didn't go into it anywhere near to the training that I needed to be doing um and I knew that but I still went in with a ton of confidence so then when I didn't perform well I was I just like couldn't grasp the fact that I had done it to myself even though the circumstances that had happened outside of the pool were kind of out of my control um so I I just it, it hit me in places that it took a long time to to fix mm -hmm. um but this time around i'm ready and i'm excited like i i swam in the knoxville tier pro swim series and i mean that's i was right on my best time and i mean you know it, you can only go up like if you're going best times not tapered not shaved in an old 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 suit that has seen the pool way too many times it's it's an exciting time and so it gives you the, the little bit of confidence that you need when you need it yeah well you're standing behind the blocks at olympic trials a few months from now and you're in the the, the final of the 200 i am you're in lane three or four you know um and then you know they're about to whistle you up on the block like what's going on in your mind at that point in time nothing <laughs> Um, I, I mean, and I, I'm sorry, I keep bringing, bringing it back to this, but that's when your mental training kicks in. Um, I'm a firm believer that some of the fastest swimmers in the world don't remember their best race races. Um, you get in the water and if you have prepared mentally and physically enough and to a certain level, your body's and your mind is just going to take over. Mm. You're not going to have to think about what you're doing your your natural instincts of what you have been training for every single day take over and i'll sit here right now and tell you i don't remember some of my best races mm -hmm. i i don't i don't remember i it's like you block out um and i just every time i get on the blocks it's just you get a little reminder you're like you know what to do and you hop up and you do it and that's hopefully when i get on the blocks at olympic trials my mind will be blank because i know it's going to be a good race <laughs> How do you pace yourself in that, or not pace yourself, but how do you race your 200 IM? What, what's your strengths? Where do you take off, and where do people kind of catch you, things like that? Well, you're making me spill all of the secrets. <laughs> um, I, usually, I usually go out and fly pretty fast. Backstroke has been what I've been struggling with the most here lately, but we've been working on different things, te tempo, how I'm catching the water and holding on to it, uh, my hips, what my hips are doing while I'm kicking. Um, so we've, we've been working on things like that, that have really helped in the past couple of weeks. Um, and then breaststroke, uh, we kind of realized that I was taking a lot less strokes than most people on the breaststroke. So I was then struggling in freestyle because I was so oxygen deprived that lactic acid began setting in mm -hmm. so quickly compared to other people. I was just, I couldn't keep up on the freestyle. So something I've had to do is get out of my freaking comfort zone with taking less strokes and I've had to start taking more but it makes it makes all the difference I can I get into freestyle and I'm like okay like I can I can get moving I can get into a rhythm where before I was, was fighting the water just it wasn't a fun way to finish a 200 IM and then you watch everyone go past you and you're like well now what so <laughs> I that's something we've really been working on in the last couple of weeks so I mean I, I can't tell you everything but yeah yeah backstroke and breaststroke have definitely been where you know i can make the biggest changes that mm -hmm. will make the biggest difference yeah awesome well listen i really appreciate it. i know it's it's crazy time for everybody but uh, i've enjoyed this conversation are you really easy to talk to by the way so oh, thank you it's good for a podcast so um <laughs> We'll try and get this up as, as quick as we can and get it out there. But uh, a lot of people sitting at home and, and not much to do. But, uh, you know, I hope for the best. And, and I, I hope the Olympic trials still go as scheduled. And, and I hope you can get your training in and, and, and make that Olympic team. So I wish you all the best, all right? All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, take care, all right?
All right, bye-bye. Bye.